When I was 23 years old, I set off on a journey from England to Benghazi in Libya to take part in an, an, a, an archaeological uh, project that had, uh, was a combination of a few, few years' work. I'd been out there twice before, uh, and each time I'd flown out and flown back again. This third time that I was uh, going out, I decided it would be more interesting to go over land. And this, is, this account is my, of, of my journey there and back. In the process, I uh, traveled about 6,000 miles. I should have done only 2,000, uh, 4,000 miles, but uh, interna international events influenced my uh, journey getting there. To, uh, I visited some 20 ancient sites in the course of the, of the uh, trip. Um, and I uh, um, appreciate that although people watching this have an appetite for archaeology, they probably don't want to have a fine and uh, inf infinite detail of the subject. Uh, something that was brought home to me on, in the later stages of my trip when my colleagues and I saw a, a Roman arch coming up in the distance, the triumphal arch, and uh, by that stage we just slowed down, looked at it as, as we went past, and none of us even suggested stopping. It was just another arch after quite a lot. So this is the account of this journey. To just fill in the background to the, to the Mediterranean in classical times, um, you'll be familiar with the concept of the Roman, uh, Roman Empire covering the, the Mediterranean and the lands around it. The, the eastern part of their empire had uh, been gained from, largely by conquest initially over, over the Greeks, their neighbours, uh, and the Greek Empire had included not just the Aegean and the, much of the Adriatic, but um, also the northern, northern North Africa, areas around the, the, the Black Sea and even the Levant. The western part of the Roman Empire uh, had been gained by conquest from over the Carthaginians, the descendants of Phoenician travellers from the Levant, who, whose, settled, whose capital was at Carthage. Now, in the process of my trip, uh, in 1974, I visited the cities of Athens, Rome, and Carthage. So in the space of about two months, I actually saw the capitals uh, or what had been the principal cities of these three different empires, as well as, as I said earlier, many other sites and towns and cities uh, of, the, of the Roman classical world. My tale begins really not in England, I cut that bit out of the journey, but in northern France where in August 1974 I found myself working on an Iron Age cemetery excavation outside the city of Reims in the, the old territory of the Gallic Remy tribe. This was, had got me a, a, a useful stepping stone on my journey and the first, uh, and I was, felt that I was dealing here with the, the classical um, Gauls that Julius Caesar uh, conquered in the 50s uh, before Christ at the end of the Republican period of, of Rome. The, but the first monument of, of that Roman world and the classical architecture that I saw was when I left Reims, when I set off on my journey for, uh, uh, and, and arrived at, uh, went from Reims Station, which is uh, adjacent to this classical arch called the Arch of Mars, a third century triumphal arch. This was an introduction. I felt here that I was leaving the, bar the barbarian world of Northern Europe and setting out towards the, the classical Mediterranean. But it was the first of many sites that I was to see. I dwell, uh, deal with this early part of the journey in some, some uh, detail simply because it was by train and the train from Paris, where I left the, the, the Reims train and, and set off for the 
Gare de Leon was the famous Orient Express to Athens. Now, the, the Orient Express left at midnight from the Gare de Leon, and I, I arrived well before that to, to buy my ticket uh, and to uh, see what see what I what the travel involved because it was three a three a journey of three nights um, arriving on the following Thursday morning in Athens. Where the benefit of uh, of those who were fortunate enough not to travel on this train in its later stages of service, it went out of service altogether two years after my trip. Uh, I'll just, uh, I must tell you really that the, contrary to the, the, the images portrayed by Agatha Christie and Graham Greene and other people in, in films like Murder on the Orient Express, this film had, this, the, the, the train had rather lost its its gloss by the time I travelled. It was more like some of the the mixed odd rolling stock confections that used to travel the Leeds to Manchester line on the on the Trans Pennine route. There was, to much much to my dismay, no sleeping accommodation, not even couchettes. There was no way on the on the train to uh, buy any food so i had to buy my provisions for the journey um, in paris before i set off and they were pretty basic although they did include a a, a, a bottle of duty-free whiskey from the ferry which i found very useful on the, in the course of the trip we set off uh, from the the gare de leon at midnight uh, they they the train was in three sections. The different destinations of the separate, separate sections were Graz in Austria, Athens, the, the, my, my destination, and the longest stretch was uh, would finish at Istanbul. Uh, the at each at each bit would be detached when we got to uh, well, firstly Milan and then Belgrade for the for the two the final sections. And um, to say that the accommodation was disappointing would be a great, under, a great understatement because it was frankly shabby. And we were sitting in, in this compartment next to a train also about to set off the Trans Europe Express, which was luxurious in the extreme and uh, seeing um, society characters being fed champagne in the adjacent uh, compartment only feet away from us rather underlined the, dis the discomfort that seemed to promise uh, uh, in a three-day journey. The other thing about the train that was unpleasant was that that, that little room down the end of the corridor, uh, nobody seemed particularly keen to, to, to visit it after about this the Swiss frontier, and we had two more, two and a half more days to go at that stage. But we set off at midnight, and the, the, the guard, before we reached the Swiss frontier, informed me that we, I wasn't in second class, I was actually in first class, which rather brought this back, as brought me up a bit, but I found that for paying about three pounds as a supplement, I could stay in first class. Uh, this was okay for, for until I reached the Swiss, um, um, Swiss Italian frontier, by which time the Swiss guard had come round to collect the tickets and, and just announced that actually that only counted for France as the supplement. They, I would have to pay for every sub, uh, every the country that I went through a supplement. So I decided to change car car uh, carriages at Milan. When I got to Milan, uh, by the way, these this, the course of this journey is illustrated by mm, photographs culled together mainly from old films, uh, which uh, give something of the atmosphere, perhaps, of, of the antiquity of the train, which I'm sure was at least 1930s rolling stock, if not older. At Milan, uh, the, the congestion was such as I found that uh, I found my way to a fourth uh, um, uh, a carriage that was uh, second or third class, 
it was that it, that instead of having six people in the compartment, as in first class, in the third or second class, it was eight people. And I managed to find my, uh, get, well, I found myself a space in a compartment with uh, that was already full, uh, but had uh, squeezed up to make room for me, uh, partly because three of the youngsters in there were also fellow, uh, young, they were students, uh, they were Britons and they were students on the way to Belgrade to exercise their Serbo-Croat. I was hugely impressed. I think I ought to emphasize that at this stage, I, I, nobody could have been more naive a, a, a traveler than me. Absolutely no, no idea how to, <laughs> no, no, no real intuition about what, what to do or initiative to, 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 uh, to use in, in uh, times of stress. However, uh, the whiskey helped to reduce any signs of stress. And I made my way, uh, well, followed the train out past Venice to over the lagoon and, and back out again and to Trieste. At Trieste, we reached Yugoslavia. At that time, Yugoslavia was um, under Tito. It was, strictly speaking, the Iron Curtain, but a very soft Iron Curtain. Um, a flappy iron curtain that you came and went through. And indeed, the Yugoslavs have found it very easy to come down to, to Trieste and, um, and do their shopping and then go back again. Um, and this rather held the train up because they, they were given the, the full going over by this, the, the uh, customs uh, um, when, we, uh, when, when they crossed the border. But uh, the Britons, and including me, were, were, they were not interested in us, so they just carried on. And we, through the night, as the dry, night drew on, we went through what are now national capitals at Ljubljana and Zagreb, and stopped the night, kept... They, they, these, these stops rather woke us up, so they gave us something to do as we slumbered our way to, as the train rattled, rattled on. The next time I, I woke up, it was because... I felt somebody pulling my wallet out of my pocket. This seedy looking character that Elisha Cook Jr. Uh, seems to symbolize the kind of startling response that this chap had when, when I opened my eyes, just as he was lifting, uh, lifting my wallet out of my breast pocket. He garbled some story uh, in, in, about cigarettes in a language that I couldn't understand and um, disappeared before I was even half awake. Everybody else woke up in the corridor, in, in the camp compartment as well, and we stowed our valuables away uh, accordingly, but as we headed on to Belgrade. At Belgrade, we had to change uh, com uh, carriages um, as the trains were coupled up and we got a new engine. Uh, and there, um, a very sophisticated lady um, joined our uh, the, my new compartment. Uh, she was... Uh, uh, really, it's sort of the sort of contessa type, but rather, rather, rather down on her luck. But managed to speak several languages, which was uh, it was lovely. Unfortunately, she got out at Niche before we reached the Greek border, uh, and that left me largely in the company of three men, two of whom were young Egyptians on their way home to Cairo, and then one an older um, uh, Israeli man on his way to Athens. Uh, as the two countries had been at war only nine months earlier, uh, this was unfortunate. <laughs> and the icy, the icy um, atmosphere um, led me to out, uh, out at the, when we reached the, the Greek frontier and halted for the customs uh, to, to get some air. As I, as I, let, as I sort of uh, hung out of the the, the 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 window, looking between the two uh, between the the. Uh, our train and, and another one going in the, the other direction that was halted. Um, I could, uh, I heard the uh, the sound of a guitar playing, and there, um, just over the the, the tracks, was um, a little taverna with uh, the lights on and people sitting drinking and, in, and enjoying themselves round a, round a, a table. And there was the lovely Mediterranean warmth of the air and the fresh air. You can imagine that after at least two nights and two days and into the now into the third night uh, of very limited uh, or non-existent facilities for doing much to keep clean uh, and and the or even ventilate the carriages 
uh, this was quite a welcome experience. But then I was watching the, 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 the I realized that the train the other way was having the same um, third degree from the customs uh, that, that we'd had, that our Yugoslav colleagues had had back at near Trieste. And um, to our, my amazement, I saw four car tires thrown out of uh, one of the doorways of the, and the train that sort of bouncing onto the track. The idea of a, of a train, if, if it was anything like as crowded as ours had been, with somebody trying to squeeze four tires onto the thing would have taken some, some nerve. Anyway, on we moved. I fell asleep. We woke up again in the hills of Macedonia uh, as we were coming down towards the third pass of Thermopylae, the, where um, Leonidas and his 300 pralines, sorry, Spartans, uh, defended them against the 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 war the the, uh, the, the Persian forces uh, of Darius or Xerxes, whichever it was. And beyond that, we we travelled on the last stage. Uh, well, as as we were drawing near to Athens, I, I thought, well, I was really looking forward to, to to getting off the train and enjoying some some rest and relaxation uh, before I had to go on to fly on to Benghazi. We, put, we stopped at a, a little halt that was one of these small stations, a bit like the, a bit like Drem on the Edinburgh to Berwick uh, slow train uh, route. Um, and and uh, I, I was astounded to see that it was Thebes station. Um, the former Greek city-state capital uh, the uh, ruled over by Oedipus at one point. He's represented in this little attic painted pottery vessel, uh, solving the riddle of, a, of the Sphinx. Anyway, on from there, we, we moved on and soon arrived in Athens, where to my much, much uh, some sort of consternation, I found that my, my plans for, for the rest of the journey across to Benghazi had suddenly been confounded by international events. When I got on the train at, at uh, Paris on the, on the Monday, I uh, and looked in a copy of The Guardian and seen that the, uh, the situation had stabilised in, in, um, in the Balkans. What had happened in July and had caused a certain amount of concern for me of the prospect of my, for my journey was that the, um, there'd been a coup d'etat in, in Cyprus uh, in an attempt to give a way advantage over to, to the Greek settlers uh, to, to join, unite, uh, to, to unite Cyprus to its Greek um, partner, uh, sort of ethnic partner. <coughs> this had been countered by the Turks uh, the Turkish uh, Turkey sending their army over to um, to help the uh, Cypriot Turks. This had uh, stabilised to some extent by the time I left Paris, and I felt things, maybe things weren't so bad after all. When I got to Athens, the things had changed around a bit, and <laughs> they were bad. The the ferries had been mostly um, impounded and, and adopted by the military. The army was was mobilised, and there was serious uh, um, risk of war between Greece and Turkey over the issue. And they, there were crowds of, of youngsters demonstrating in in, uh, in the centre of Athens. And um, uh, I thought, well, uh, so, uh, the sooner I leave the city, the better, really. But it did take me a couple of days to sort to, to find a way out because. All the flights to Benghazi, which are normally you know, half empty, uh, were booked up for a month. Uh, it was only after um, futile efforts to, uh, to, to, to get a cancellation or, or see if there was a ship going across the, to Benghazi that, um, that I found that the only way to get there was to go to Rome. So, but even so, I, I did manage to while away some time uh, visiting the the, the Acropolis and the, the Parthenon and the, see the, the Temple of Hephaestus in, in, the, in, the, <clears throat> the, uh, in the valley below and the, the Agora. Uh, but it was time to move on. So I took the bus 
from Athens across to the Peloponnese to Patras. By the way, I, I crossed them. They, they, they're very obliging. The bus had sort of an obligatory stop so that you can go and photograph the Corinth Canal as you go over it, and, which is very impressive. This is looking westwards towards the, the Gulf of um, Corinth. Um, and Patras is at the western end of that, uh, more or less where the Battle of Lepanto was fought between the Christian and Ottoman forces in the uh, in the 1570s. There I, I took a, a, um, a ferry uh, which uh, set out in the evening past Ithaca, where I was reminded of um, Odysseus and, uh, and his travels and faithful Penelope uh, weaving, uh, um, waiting for him to return and fighting off suitors. And then we passed up th through the, the strait between Corfu and Albania. Of course, Albania at that time was, was a, a communist lockdown country and it was strange to see people wandering around on the beach um, there, given that uh, uh, the, the, the isolation of the country. So we reached Bindizi after a night on the, on the ferry and, and having spent most of the day crossing the bottle, bottom of the, uh, the Adriatic Sea. From Brindisi, I had to take another train and this involved the first four hours standing in the corridor um, and this was an overnight train too. So, so eventually, as I, when I'd fallen down asleep for about the third time, somebody in the adjacent compartment took pity on me and they squeezed up and found me a room where I could in instantly fell asleep again, only waking up to, as we arrived in, in Rome in the early, the next, the next morning, as everybody was on their way to work. So, the first thing I did in Rome was to go to the Alitalia offices and get a, a book a flight to Benghazi, but they, I couldn't go the same day. It, 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 wasn't, it was full, I'd have to wait till the next day. That left me a day to, straight, to, 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 to amble around Rome um, and the problem of finding somewhere to stay. I tried the British school, but that was no, no dice. Um, and. Uh, I mentioned that I was naive and lacking in initiative in these, in these uh, circumstances. I had been to Rome before on a school trip several years earlier. There's a little picture of me at the time. Um, so I'd seen pretty, pretty well exhausted a lot of this, the, the ancient sites. But I, nevertheless, I still took in things like the Pantheon when I was sort of ambling around uh, looking for somewhere to stay. Uh, the big mistake I'd made, of course, was I was I was looking for the equivalent of a sort of bed and breakfast in what what Rome's equivalent of the West End of London. Uh, absolutely no chance. So, um, I, but I, it was very hot. It was August. Lots of crowds around, and I, uh, I, I kept myself going. I think mainly on Orangina fizzy orange drink. Yeah. You couldn't get bottle, plastic bottles of water very easily in those days. Uh, and uh, I had uh, this Englishman's suspicion of any water that, doesn't, uh, that, isn't, uh, that isn't English. So um, at one point, uh, so hot was it, and so tired was I was walking around that I found a quiet, a quiet street near the Borghese Gardens where I settled down took my shoes and socks off and, and uh, put my feet in the fountain. Um, and an American woman with her small son came up and made a great sort of deviation to avoid me. Um, when I heard them coming back a few minutes later and the, 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 the boy had, had, had been intrigued by me sitting with my feet in the fountain. And then this, and she walked past him and then they carried on. I heard her dis distinctly heard her say, I don't want you ever to be like that man. <laughs> so I, I, I made my uh, every effort to to uh, to sound like a foreigner uh, and 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 not let the side down thereafter, um, until I could get to Benghazi and clean up once again. I spent the evening uh, gazing at the at the the, the, the marble cartoon strip that is the um, that represents the 
the war that, that the Emperor Trajan carried out successfully in, in Dacia, that's modern Romania. It's beside his, the, his forum, um, just near the Victory Manual Monument in the, in the middle of Rome. And it, uh, I think I basically stayed there very tired and um, wait, waiting for it to get dark. And when it did, I simply strolled off, not having found anywhere to sleep. I, I just went up and slept in a, in a garden near, on the, near the Capitoline Hill. Um, and I was, uh, wasn't disturbed by anything throughout the night. I uh, slept pretty soundly, apart from what, one or two odd things sort of climbing over me in the night, but they were small, too small and didn't really bother me. The next morning, I, I probably startled state, uh, people when I uh, tr tried shaving in a public fountain when people were going uh, to work. Uh, and uh, even more so as I was sort of stripped to the waist and cut, uh, nicked my chin with a razor, which meant that there was this sort of this figure with apparently trying to cut his throat in a public fountain. But I knew the, Ro the Romans were, were, were stolidly sort of... A, a, um, Capable of, of of seeing people thrown to lions and, and so on without uh, without blushing, so uh, they they mostly ignored me. That afternoon, I managed to get on a plane and finally got to Benghazi, after about four thousand miles of, of travelling. And they, uh, as particularly as the plane had to go to Tripoli first, it's a bit disturbing because they 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 have a habit in Libya of of. Um, leaving crashed cars by the roadway to, 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 as a warning to, uh, to, to drivers. And they seem to do the same with uh, crashed aircraft. So sort of circling in over Tripoli in those days, you, you sort of passed over these ruins of, uh, of previous uh, unsuccessful landings. Very disturbing. <clears throat> the, once to be in Benghazi, I spent the next five, five weeks or thereabouts with the team working on the um, post excavation stage, as we call it, the, the writing up of excavations that had been going on for the previous two years. When I'd worked out there before, I'd been here beside the sea, a charming site, very interesting. Roman buildings like this, this courtyard house here, and things to find like this plaque with, of Apollo um, driving his chariot of the sun. Uh, the kind of thing that is rarely discovered in, in, on a, a British excavation. Even uh, when, when uh, we know that they must have existed in Britain. While I was there, we were able to uh, use our days off to go and visit other places um, in, the, uh, in, the, in the region. The Benghazi was ancient Berenike, so named after the, the wife of one of the Ptolemies that had the satraps that took over the Eastern um, Empire, the Macedonian Empire, after the death of, uh, of um, Alexander the Great and was based in Egypt. The uh, Eastern Libya is, is called Cyrenaica. Um, this is because Cyrene was the, the capital and in the later stages of, of the Greek settlement, it became known as the, the Pentapolis, the five cities, Cyrene, Apollonia, Ptolemais, Tokra, and Berenike. Uh, so in the time that I was there that year, we, we visited all, all five of those places. Uh, well, realizing you don't want to be bored too far, where I'd seen, seen lots of columns and temples and things, uh, I simply stim run through some of them. Uh, I think I have to say something about the, uh, the, um, the city of Cyrene itself in particular. We had this Land Rover, which enabled us to get out, get around. And this is, it was the Land Rover that I would be traveling back to England in at the end of the project. Cyrene is a, is a, a wonderful site. It, it's, it sits on a, a, an escarpment, limestone escarpment, overlooking another range of hills, which extend for several miles and then um, fall as another escarpment to a, a very narrow coastal plain, and there's the Mediterranean. 
in this photograph. You can see the distance that's looking down over the escarpment. It's not sea that you can see, it's the, it's the, the horizon. The horizon is the, the escarpment. Cyrene was founded in well, the seventh century BC by settlers from Thera, the, the island we now more, more commonly known as Santorini. And um, the, uh, the thing that attracted them in particular was that there was water here, uh, the water in the form of springs in grottoes that's come through the limestone. They established a, a religious shrine to Apollo here, the temple and various grottoes and things related to it. There was, a, there was a whole sanctuary area in this particular part of the site, but as, it, uh, as its history developed and, we, and the Romans extended it, it became an enormous city with a huge necropolis of, of th literally thousands of rock cut tombs and graves and sarcophagi um, surrounding it in different, different dry valleys and, and uh, parts of the plain to the south. This on the right is, is one of the rock cut tombs from the early stages of the settlement. In addition to the temple of Apollo, there was also a temple of Zeus, this one here. In the, uh, in the first century AD, or second century AD, it was equipped with a, um, an eight times life-size statue, a seated statue of Zeus himself, a replica of the, of the eighth wonder of the world that existed in the, oh no, the seventh wonder of the, of the world that existed in the, the, the temple at, at Delphi, or Olympia, um, of Zeus himself. Uh, the, the effect of seeing a, a seated god of that size in, in a temple, I, I find it difficult to imagine, but 30 years later walked into something very similar in a temple in, in China, a Buddhist temple which had a, a 25 metre high seated figure of a bodhisattva with 40 arms, um, very much like something out of the Thief of Baghdad film with Sabu stealing the all-seeing eye from the god. Cyrene, the Roman remains, like the theatre here and these temples and these mosaics and things, very fine, very fine. I mean, it's a, a, a huge site. But um, it was damaged at various times. It was a revolt of the Jewish population. Uh, I mean, Cy Cyrene is, is particularly known for associated with Simon of Cyrene, of course, uh, from the crucifixion period. But um, there was a large Jewish population that revolted in, the, in 115 AD and um, did a lot of damage then. But in, in, the, uh, in 365 AD, the, the city was affected by a, a, a considerable earth, uh, earthquake and the toppled to columns and walls from that period, many of them were never restored or, re <coughs> or rebuilt. And um, they could still be seen where they fell. I'll just I'll give you a sample of one of the cities of the coast, uh, Ptolemais, named after the satrap in, uh, ruler in Egypt, the, um, but older than that, in fact. Uh, um, uh, but the, the walls were around this city were built in about the third century BC, they're Hellenistic walls, so they belong to that Macedonian um, empire period. But they enclose an area about the size of medieval York, as enclosed by York's own city walls now. The temple, the Tokra Gate, is, is a particularly fine surviving example of the gate, uh, of, of the, the walls. And um, the, 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 the quality of some of the structures is, is, is still excellent. This is the, the uh, a Byzantine church from about the sixth century. AD. This is a tomb from one of the um, burial areas outside the city, um, the, the so-called royal tomb, because it was originally at least three stories. This is it's, it's, It stands on a block of stone because the rest of it has been quarried away around it. So it's made it artificially higher, but it is lower than it originally would have been. Um, I can show you something similar or comparable with it later on in this, in, <coughs> in this talk. So this was, this was a, a city of enormous size. How many people live there, I have no idea, but, but it's hardly been excavated. So there are very, very 
few monuments that have actually that are actually really still visible. The streets can be picked out for much of the way, but the 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 church here is just one of many examples in Libya that benefited from the um, benefited it was a two-edged <laughs> two-edged sword by the being in the Italian Empire in the uh, uh, from from 1911 Mussolini was particularly keen to restore what he described as Italia Irredenta the the the, the ancient Roman um, Empire uh, were around the Mediterranean well <clears throat> Libya was his was his chief project and uh, he was encouraged archaeologists to go and excavate at the Roman Libyan cities and to and to restore wherever possible um, the the well, well freeze, feasible the the buildings that they were studying. So this is just one example, but I'll show a particularly good one in a little while. Oh, this is uh, just a, an incident that happened. Not this, not that visit, but when, on my previous visit to the to, to Ptolemais, which was why I was particularly keen to go again. Uh, this uh, we had a, a visit with a, some some friends, British expats working in Benghazi and their family, and they took us out there in the car, and we had hardly hardly got started after our picnic and swim in the sea, um, when their little boy fell through one of the holes in this. Into this system, into one of these systems. Now, fortunately, he didn't fall under a heap of rubble like this. Then he fell onto a sandy bottom, but he, we had to rush off um, to get him to the hospital. And, and, and the little lad was just knocked about a bit, but he quickly recovered. But these systems are enormous. This is one of about 15 large systems covering um, a square in the center of the city and fed by an aqueduct. But it just shows you that in the north, that it was such so dry that when you had a city the size of, of, of medieval York, you had to, to be able to give them a, a good supply of water. And millions of gallons of water must have been stored in these systems from the winter rains in the hills. Now, after our time working on the excavations in, in uh, Benghazi, we, uh, we, after it came to an end and, and it was time to go home, I set off with uh, two colleagues initially. We met, met up with two more in, 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 in Tunis, uh, where they'd gone for a holiday, um, and set off uh, on the way home. We, were, we would get the, the boat from Tunis, but we'd have to get there, first of all, overland with a Land Rover. The first step, leg of the journey from Benghazi to Leptis Magna was 600 miles and we did it in the day um, passing from Cyrenaica into the Tripolitania, the ancient provinces which had been revived by the uh, under the, the Italian Empire of Mussolini. He'd also built an arch striding the road, the Via Balbia, uh, um, at the junction of the two provinces. This was known as Marble Arch, and it was a familiar uh, um, uh, feature for British soldiers in the Eighth Army traveling this way in about 1943. And in fact, it was at the point of where there was quite a lot of battles with Rommel and people like that, um, and the Italians uh, before that. So we actually paused there to see where the arch had been <laughs> because we'd missed it by about a year, um, only the year beforehand. Um, uh, most, uh, uh, Colonel Gaddafi had had, um, had it destroyed um, as a an unwanted symbol of of um, foreign domination of, of of Libya, which is quite understandable. But it's a great shame that we 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 weren't there earlier to see it before it went. the The journey was hot and dry, and we drank very little if we could avoid it. We didn't usually because it, it, we made up for it in the evening. You only made, it only made you thirstier in the daytime. But by the time we got to Bougrain, which is a place in the in the sort of uh, about here, um, things had got pretty dry. I think we ended up all we could find was some tepid mango juice in tins. So we travelled on, but there thereafter for about twenty miles was the most bleak and desolate bit of desert that I can that I've ever seen. I think it was like driving over a a concrete surface uh, with just dust and, and chips of rock around. 
for about 20 miles, so you certainly wouldn't have wanted to break down there and be left for any length of time. But soon after, we went, we traveled, we found ourselves in farming country and, and we'll, we'll, it was most welcome, welcome to, to find farmers selling melons by the side of the road. Uh, we bought some, we bought some and, and, and just feasted on them, um, much like um, a, a, a I read. I remember reading later on that uh, Alan Quatermain uh, and his companions in the, searching for King Solomon's mines uh, had had been had their lives saved by wild melons after a 40, 40 mile trek across the desert on foot. We reached Leptis Magna and stayed there for two nights at the government rest house. We were able to explore the city. Um, at our leisure, we were the only visitors in those days. You, you, the, the, there was no tourist industry in, in Libya in, in the 1970s, early 70s. And the next day, well, sooner or later, we would, uh, our next visit after would be uh, Sabratha. Um, there were three cities in Tripolitania, Sabratha, Leptis Magna, and in the middle, Ea, as it was called, O-E-A. Tripoli is the site of here now, so there was not much to see there. And we, we bypassed it. I'd seen the triumphal arch there, and that was about it. The theatre at Sabratha was very fine, but Leptis, I would just say a bit more about. Not a lot, because I don't want to bore you, but, but the, um, the site the, is exquisite with the, the, the background of the Mediterranean Sea, fabulous buildings like this theatre, and sculpture. Um, to, to grace any museum. Uh, very, very um, well-preserved buildings everywhere and, con and, and um, very robust constructions. The first time I went to Libya, I was um, talking to my Arab friend, Mufta, and he's, he was uh, working for the antiquities department and, and very proud of the fact that, that the Empress Septimius Severus had been, in, been uh, born in Leptis Magna because it, he was the, the only Libyan that, to have ruled the known world. Um, and, but uh, Mufta was taken aback when I pointed out that he may have been born in Libya, but he died in my hometown of York in England. <laughs> <laughs> and which left him a bit bemused. And you, here's me in the middle, just to, resting myself uh, in the forica, uh, a sort of public seating area um, with uh, with uh, drains. We moved on. We we took in Sabratha uh, the next day. This is the magnificent theatre there, and. The next um, several days we spent zigzagging about Tunisia, uh, looking for looking for the, uh, the sites, and eventually ending up at Tunis. <clears throat> Just to briefly summarise how we went. The first night we stopped in Gabes, which was uh, a welcoming spot. Um, I think being all, all in a, all in our twenties and not uh, and fairly broad minded, we were much much uh, uh, we were very much looking forward to the the wider range of beverages that was arranged uh, available in Tunisia, um, Libya not having any alcohol, um, and uh, Gabes was the first place we encountered it. Uh, there were no remains there, so I'll pass over that quickly. But the next morning we set off. None of us feeling particularly well. But um, our driver at this occasion, Frank, insisted on being the one to drive because he could see the bumps in the road coming. John, the other one, is, uh, is the, the leader of the expedition. Our first stop was El Gem, uh, the sort of Colosseum in the middle of nowhere, is a good way of describing it as anywhere. And we, in the evening, we, we stayed in Kairouan. While I was, while we walked through the streets of Kaiwan, which is actually a, a very holy shrine city with a magnificent, very old mosque, mosque from the, from the something like the eighth, ninth century, um, and the mosque where they they built it partly using reusing Roman columns from brought from uh, the site of Carthage. Um, as we walked through the streets, I was approached by a young lad who, who, who proudly declared that he was the the number one lover of Kaiwan. Yeah. 
yeah, I didn't see the relevance of this, but uh, it was pointed out to me later on that this perhaps was um, an opening gambit for some kind of commercial arrangement, but uh, uh, we passed on and uh, I never saw him again. So from Cairo 1, the next day, we set off uh, southwest down towards the, the Atlas foothills and into a uh, Roman site at Spatla. We then moved on to uh, Spatla was where we saw the Roman arch came in, uh, coming up and decided no, it wasn't quite in, it, it good enough to us to stop. Maktar uh, was a, uh, another one up in the hills and Dugga, uh, but oh, before Dugga, we reached El Kef where we stayed the night. Uh, the, the, we couldn't get, the only hotel we found had a, a one room available and it was the bridal suite. Um, it was kitted out uh, in a sort of uh, rather interesting way. It had a, there was a marriage bed with two sort of pallet beds at the foot for the, for the flunkies or servants. Uh, and, uh, and so we had to draw lots. Um, it was uh, uh, John that got the bridal bed and Frank and I had to have the, the flunkies pallets. It was all very well, but it was, a, it was a cooler place by the time we got up here after all the heat of the desert. We were into temperate mountains. Uh, the, the food was very good. Excellent. So, uh, and, and I've always loved couscous ever since. The, um, the mountains here were so close to the Algerian borders that you could see the, 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 the lights of towns in Algeria. And these hills in, this, in, uh, in the distance were where the actual border um, ran. The following day, we visited Dugga. Um, uh, I will say a little bit more about that in a minute. And um, then from there, traveled on to, to Carthage, uh, to Tunis and Carthage. Carthage is disappointing from the Carthaginian point of view. All of it, Tunis, Tunisia and even Tripolitania was originally Carthaginian, but there's very little to see of it. Uh, and there are Carthaginian um, inscriptions in a, a, a strange script. Uh, and even the names of people in, oh, oh even under the Romans in, in Leptis Magna, uh, people had names like Hannibal, uh, but um, nothing, uh, nothing at all really of the architecture of the, of the Carthaginians. But what does survive at Carthage is the enormous harbour uh, that uh, was the, where the Carthaginian fleet that gave them so much uh, um, of an edge over all, uh, over all their rivals. That was where it was, would be uh, gathered and uh, it was the naval base of, uh, of, of their empire. Dugger. <clears throat> This uh, image uh, of me here uh, standing on this stone, uh, the, the, sim the significance is that this, the, Im the inscription says Britannicus. Um, it's come from this temple here, which is a temple to built to the victories of the Emperor Caracalla. He was the son of Septimius Severus and, and, uh, and and was with him when his father died in 211 in York, uh, campaigning uh, in, uh, against the North Britons. Uh, hence, his he did take the title as well. It is a superb city. Um, it's very close to the site of the battlefield of Zama, uh, where uh, Hannibal was, um, was defeated by Scipio Africanus, the, the, the Roman general. The hills are wonderful. They 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 dry, but but reasonably good farming land among them. And the the season, of course, this was late September. It was really very very agreeable. Again, a, 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 a very presentable theatre survives. Um, and and by this stage, of course, we're not in the Italian Empire anymore, as it was in the in the in the twentieth century, but the the French Empire. The Battle of Zama were, was um, won uh, by Scipio, chiefly because he had the, the assistance of the Numidian cavalry of, of, the, of King Masinissa. 
Masinissa had been a sort of hero of mine as a, as a, a boy reading about the, the, the war with Hannibal and Livy's account um, uh, at school. And I was delighted to find that what outside the city at, at Duga was this, this, this tomb, called the, which is called the tomb of Masinissa. The thing I showed at Ptolemaic were, were of a tomb that was sort of basically a block of square, a cube of masonry uh, uh, that I said was actually three stories originally, uh, was, was something comparable to this. Um, it's it's a, a fascinating st structure. And, and of course, the, 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 the name is attached to it it's simply because people have heard of Masinissa and nobody knows where his tomb was. But as far as I'm concerned, this is the tomb of Masinissa and uh, this is where he's buried or was buried. As we moved on to, uh, to uh, towards Tunis, we, we visited Tuberbo Myas. Um, I say we visited it, we arrived at the gates, the place hadn't opened yet, we looked through um, and weary of, of, uh, of um, uh, sort of uh, just about sort of Romaned out by this stage. Uh, if there weren't more than a few columns standing like this, uh, uh, um, then we we decided perhaps no, we'd just move on. Tunis was too inviting, so we arrived at Udna. This um, where th this is it, 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 this heralded itself by the uh, the aqueduct. But although we found the aqueduct and we found a shapeless lump of masonry, which were, which Frank was convinced was part of the Hadrianic baths, which uh, and had, had once had mosaics all over its ceiling, we never actually found a city, which is a great shame because there's apparently the amphitheatre and temples and all sorts of things as well, but we didn't get it, to it. We did get to Carthage, but there, as I said earlier, the there's nothing of the Carthaginians to see, but there are some baths built by the uh, under the in the reign of Her the Emperor Hadrian. We also visited Utica, that was the Roman capital of, of um, the province of Africa, and um, it's where uh, the senator Cato uh, died after um, uh, his unsuccessful battle with um, Julius Caesar. <laughs> He fell on his sword or some such in the Roman tradition. One place we did visit once we were in, in Tunis was the Bardo Museum, the finest collection of, of um, Roman mosaics anywhere in the world uh, and housed in, a, in a, an old palace. Um, the name Bardo, like the, Pardo, like the Prado in Madrid, refers to a it's a Spanish, it comes from a Spanish word and, and, and refers to a, 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 veil, a, a garden. A, uh, rather like a sort of, uh, I suppose, a bibigar in, 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 in India. Yeah. When we reached Tunis, we had to say goodbye to Frank as he was going off to, to, to Italy and we le left him at the airport. But we did meet up with Paul and Becky and, um, and went and travelled on four of us and uh, crossed the, the, um, the Mediterranean to overnight and then through most of the next day to Marseille. Where we that was originally, of course, a Greek, a Greek emporium in the fourth century BC, but um, we didn't stop there. We went on, we pushed on, and found spent the night at Arles. Um, Arles was uh, the, the the sort of Roman fatigue that we were showing was was starting to uh, starting to become apparent. I mean, it has a it has a, a, an amphitheatre which once contained the town. And it was only because I got up early in the morning to, to go and look for Van Gogh's house, which uh, I didn't find, partly because it had been demolished in the, in the, in the Second World War, um, that I actually got to see the, uh, the amphitheatre at all myself. But we pressed on to Nîmes, and there we saw a very good amphitheatre, um, and the, the um, so-called Maison Carré, the, 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 the most complete Roman temple, um, in the Roman Empire. And from there, we, we, we uh, travelled a little distance into the hills to see the magnificent Pont, Pont du Gard, the, the aqueduct. Um, 
which it's difficult to this from this view to imagine that it was taking water anywhere because it's you can't see anywhere that that would have been higher and higher than the aqueduct uh, or apparently the I, I i hopping across this was um a little bit of an ordeal uh, unless you chose like i did on, on the first going one way to actually just walk along the water channel curiously it was about a foot of lime scale all right round you and the calcite deposits intriguing um and but uh, coming back over it uh, walking on the top some of the capstones were missing uh, usually you could hop over the interval but when there were a few of them missing you actually had to walk along a, a, a sort of two foot wide wall in the full knowledge that there was a 140 foot drop on uh, on one side immediately without any guardrail. For someone that has my head for heights, this was uh, a little bit of a, 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 an ordeal. We finished that day in Orange. Um, and this is really where we come to the end of, of the classical world for, for as far as this this uh, trip was concerned because here we once again meet the barbarians orange orange was uh, was a city founded by uh, the emperor augustus in about 30 bc so sort of not not long after his um defeat of anthony uh, anthony and and uh, mark anthony and uh, his undoubted sort of uh, soul uh, possession of the of the of the, of the, the power it commemorates his uh, his successful second legion and their victories over the barbarians particularly these gauls with, with their weapons their war trumpets their weapons their shields and various trophies carved in great detail uh, hugely important because um it's it's uh, it's one of the only uh, contemporary illustrations of what these things look like. Um, it's fine, you can still find swords and things, but, but uh, wooden shields and, 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 uh, and trophy and flags and things, they, they, they don't survive for archeologists. From here, we spent the night nearby um, in having got back to Gaul and away from, as, a, as it felt from the, from, the, from the classical world once more. We, we um, spent the night nearby, and then the next day, an, an heroic um, drive by, uh, by John, our, our driver, took us to Calais, where we arrived in the early hours of the following morning. And uh, once, the, once we'd passed the time in a bar where sailors and young women were the most frequent visitors um, coming and going, uh, we, we found our way to the hover port and waited there in uh, looking at the bleak channel until until the hover port arrived and we were able to get over to Sandgate and um uh, uh, Ramsgate and and uh, to the to the customs now one of the things that we set off from Benghazi with was a stuffed fox on the roof rack of of the um Land Rover it was a sort of uh, a badly stuffed fox that given to us by an archaeology student and, and we and we ch you know, childishly regarded it as a sort of mascot all the way all the way back um it was a bad idea when we reached ramsgate thirsting for our first english beer and a, a good lunch in a pub we found that we had to wait two hours for um, an approval from the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries to allow a stuffed fox, a desert fox, into, into the United Kingdom. We offered to throw it in the dock, but no, no, we had to wait until the, the, the permission had been granted, and then we were finally allowed to through to, 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 to the town. We once landed back on, on, on England shores and and found that the, the pubs had just closed. Anyway, we, we thereafter, we made our partings very soon. And, and that evening, I arrived back in York at my parents' house uh, to uh, 10 weeks after um, my, um, uh, my initial departure. So I was 
I, 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 this talk has probably lasted an hour. I, I think I, I must have been up most of the night answering the questions my parents had to, to give me that time. So you probably got off quite lightly. But thank you for listening all the time.